welcome into the Sports Buffoons Podcast. Let's get it rolling, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, back in with the Sports Buffoons clan here. We got Mike Settle here, Tanner Dawson, and Jason JG. What is up, fellas? What's up, everybody? What's up, yo? Back up in the hizzy. That's right, and we're walking in here 1-0 now, happy-go-lucky after a Chiefs victory over the Cleveland Browns. Now, it didn't come easy by any means, but, you know, we can all be excited about that. Oh, yeah. But, you know, first and foremost, what are you guys sipping on over here? Oh, well, I've yeah. got a little bit of a uh, Soko Cranberry. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a, a child of the early 2000s. So I feel like 18 year olds would like that. that. 18, 18 year olds yeah, would probably like that kind of a idea would. for a drink. But it does the trick. I mean, it actually tears it up pretty If you good, like underage so. girls in Vegas, I mean, that's your go to drink right there, right, well, JG? Soco Lime, Soco Jesus. Cranberry. That's oh, what my. you want. Uh, what you, Tanner? Oh, we got Jesse James. What we got, Mike? Yeah, we got a little Jesse James, of course, again. As you guys know, if you guys listen listening long enough, you know Jesse James is my go to. It's the cheapest, like, best quality whiskey you can find out there. So um, as far as for the price, like 15 bucks for a bottle, like, if you're trying to be a poor boy, then it works out. I mean, it's, it's a little better than my – when I worked back at Target back in the day, it's a little that better than Kentucky that. Kentucky so. Pride. Oh, don't even say you the word. that? That was disgusting. That is horrible. <laughs> Luckily, I've at least, you know, stepped up a little bit more than that over the years. But um, anyways, you guys, so we have a lot to get to today. We have a lot of Chiefs talk here. Some NFL overall, what we think about what happened over the past weekend, and some expectations as we have going towards the future of the season as we roll forward here. And then, of course, we're going to have some fantasy discussion as well. A little bit of a uh, little, little bit of buy low, sell high game with you guys and uh, your fantasy teams. I don't know if you started 0-1 or 1-0, but either way, it doesn't matter. It's still early, guys. You're not out of it, but never stop building your roster. Never stop trying to improve your team because that is what ends up making you a champion in the end for sure. But... Guys, speaking of uh, building the roster and making you a champion, Chiefs have a lot to work on here. I mean, this this game against the Browns was uh, you know frustrating without a doubt in the beginning because we saw basically the defense right away get pushed around easily by the Cleveland Browns' awesome offensive line. We kind of knew that was going to happen, though. I mean, that's not really a surprise. That that's a great uh, Cleveland Browns rushing attack that they got going on. My biggest problem though was not just that they gave up 5.9 yards per carry. They also gave up 11.5 yards per pass play as well, which those two numbers combined means they were the worst defense in the NFL this weekend. And so that's going to be a problem. That's that's, that, that's some bad games. On right, too. absolutely. So on a, on, a, on a yards per play basis, the Chiefs had the worst defense in the league. So that's something that's got to be fixed right away. I think Chris Jones, you know, he, he made his impact felt as the game went on, but early on in that game, I mean, the defensive line had no chance. I mean, well, I, know, I mean, you could tell they were missing Tyron big, big time, right? They didn't have sure. that – didn't have that, I don't know, what do you want to say, dominant guy out the there? The enforcer that comes up, the yeah. leader of the defense, of course. Yeah, you were and missing you were missing that piece on the defense. And the really started the start Tershawn Wharton as well at D-tackle in this yeah. game. And missing Frank Clark. undersized and at, for stopping the so run. So you're, you're trusting guys like Mike Dana, Tershawn Wharton, and uh, Kando, Joshua Kando, to come in and contain a Cleveland team that we were going to see for sure in the playoffs, especially with that running game they got. And to be able to contain some of those plays that Stefanski runs up, that's going to be hard for those guys, right? If it was Frank Clark, we might not have seen those explosive plays as much, and it it wouldn't allow it. But you didn't have Frank I didn't like seeing Kando out there so early. I don't think Kando's ready to play as a starter yet. or just that much playing time yet in his career. So, look, guys, I'm not here to just bag on everything. I mean, obviously the Chiefs end up having the cards fall right their way. Um, the offense ended up producing, as we all expected. Mahomes was once again phenomenal, totaling four touchdowns in the game. So, all right, all right, we're we're talking about offense producing. Let's just say we're we're talking about four guys producing of this offense. Yeah. Okay. That's this, a thing. There, there's no Hardman. It's working. There's no Pringle as of right now. There's no Robinson. Right. It yeah. is a Tyreek, Travis Kelsey, Mahomes, Clyde Show. Sure. That's I mean, it. That, and that's frustrating to witness, too, because the other guys have to get open. But as Mahomes said here today in uh, after practice, was that he just throws to the open guy. Other guys are just not the playmakers, and they're not getting open at the same rate Kelsey and Tyree Kill do. So, um, Jason, what did you think of the game, though, overall? And what, was, what are some of your thoughts about this Browns game we just witnessed? Because I don't want to spend too much time on it because we've got, we've got a big game against the Ravens to worry about for Sunday Night Football. Yeah, I understand what you guys are saying about guys not getting open past the you know the big three as we like to call them. But um, 
you know, I, I don't think too much of it because it's only week one. Uh, but my biggest takeaway from the game is the fact that, you know, you got to you gotta give the Chiefs defense a little bit of leeway here because they didn't face a good Browns offense. They faced a great Browns offense. When I look at the Browns offense, I mean, going forward, this is going to be one of the best offenses in the league. And so looking forward, we're going to talk about this a little bit later um, we're going up against the Baltimore Ravens, and I, I think we're going to see a completely different game next week against the Ravens. And so, but I the, the the number one thing I look at is the fact that the Chiefs' defense made plays when it mattered. You know, they didn't make great plays in the first half, and we know that. But I mean, you had guys like Juan Thornhill making plays in in the second half. Chris Jones. Second he half. showed up, and um, you know, and Nick Bolton had a great game, and so Nick Bolton did have a great these, game. D- oh, yeah. These he guys, I he mean, they were kind of hit or miss in the first half, but they showed up when it mattered. But again, it's it's the first week of the season, and you're playing, uh, you're not playing against a good offense. You're playing against an elite offense, and when I say elite offense, I'm not comparing that to Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs. Like those are still two different levels. But in terms of the rest of the NFL, the, the Browns are an elite offense, and they're, they're a great roster altogether. And so the fact that you won that game, I mean, to me, these are the two, two of the top four or five teams in the NFL. And so, like, I, I don't take too much stock in the fact that the Chiefs' defense didn't look great in that first half, and I think there's going to be a, a reversion back to the mean as far as that Chiefs defense, and you're going to see a completely different Chiefs defense yeah. in Week 2. Well, you're going to get uh, – looks like Frank Clark did practice fully today, so you're going to get Frank Clark back, right? You're going to get Tyron Matthew back. Those are two big starters on your, de- on your defense already. It's a huge difference. So now you have somebody that Chris Jones can go with, and also you have a guy that's going to, you know, what ad-lib plays, essentially, like he did against Houston. Hey, and when the Chiefs see the Browns in the playoffs again here in about four or five months – Odell Beckham Jr. might be a part of that offense as Correct. well. So the Chiefs look to have Tyron Matthew and Frank Clark, you know, assuming they'll be on the field. Browns will have Odell as well is the idea right yeah. now. So and, I mean, we're going to have all those games in between too, right? So yeah. things could change by far. Well, I think this defense is way better than what we saw. I mean, without a doubt. I, the, 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 we saw them in preseason. You know, it was, I thought I saw a very motivated defense, yeah. and I think that they came out flat right away against the Browns and – the Browns' O-line just bullied them. I mean, really, I think the whole team came out flat against the Browns. I think the first well, half. I, I mean, the overall. offense came out like normal. I mean, the well, home, home still looked good. I mean, still had four touchdowns. Obviously, all that still looked fine to me. Look, there's there's a big concern I have with the Chiefs team right now. And it's after week one. We can call it overreaction whatever, we after week one all you want. But there, my when I'm looking here at Mahomes throwing the ball, we had – 34 targets to different receivers. 34, right? That's all Mahomes threw. 25 of those targets were just to Hill, Kelsey, and Clyde. And that's including, and, and then you have everybody else, including a target for Remmers, Mike Remmers, right? Yeah, I don't want to talk about that. Yeah, right we now. don't want to talk about that play. And that then never happened. If you look at the receptions, right? If you look on the receptions on the other side, there was 27 receptions in the game for the Chiefs. Again, 20, was it 30? No, not 31. Sorry, 11, 6, 7. So 20. 20 of those receptions out of 27 were to Hill, Kelsey, Clyde. At, and that's included. And then after that, you have one to Remmers that you're not going to see. That is a concern to me because you're going to start double teaming Hill. And you triple team Hill because you can't double team the guy. And then you got Kelsey flying out there. So what, you're going to go to Clyde all day? You're going to be like the Lions go DeAndre Swift? Eight, 12 times? Probably not. You probably can't do that in this game. So it's going to be interesting to see how this offense adjusts going into the Ravens game because you can't have Hardman with just three receptions. You can't have Robinson, Pringle, and Bell with just one. And that's it. That's all you got after and then Rimmers. But we're not going to count Rimmers. So it's it's concerning. It's concerning, but hope, like I said, it's week one, so an overreaction. 
we can move on to week two and see. Yeah, I mean, it's a little bit concerning for me, but at the same time, I mean, you've got the whole season to figure out who that fourth guy is going to be. I mean, we know it's not going to be Demarcus Robinson because he knows how to catch the ball. It and might fall be. Down. It might be. That's Mahomes' he, guy. He'll catch the ball and fall down. Yeah, that's I mean, fine that's, though. That's all I can but see. But that's with him. that's your fourth guy. But, that might be your fourth guy. But it, but it could be yards, Pringle. You know, down. it could be somebody else. But we've got or the whole sideways. season to figure that out. We don't really care until the playoffs hit. And so it's it's a long season for me and you know like I said uh, as far as the the rest of it's concerned we're not the defense they're not going to be going up against Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt every week okay. as I said on the post game show and they're not even going they're no. not going to go up against JK Dobbins and Gus Edwards you, you, next week. Yeah, so. you're going to find a hard combo. Now Mike, we talk still talking about the Cleveland game here. A new offensive line for Patrick Mahomes here. Obviously Orlando Brown had his hands full with Miles Garrett who by far, it's one of the top leading rushers in the league, talent-wise and just stat-wise. And but you on the other side, you had Lucas Nyan. Lucas Nyan's first game of the season, yes, he it's adjustment for him. He was going against a pretty much Pro Bowl line at defense uh, to be in general. Uh, but was there concern for you? Was it concern for you, Jason, with Lucas Nyan on just getting kind of manhandled at times? And, you know, you could see him out of breath also. So that was also a big concern. I mean, I mean, it was concerning during the game. Also, it was Lucas Nyang's first ever game in the Correct. NFL as well. So you're going against Jadavian Clowney. And, you know, as we know, Miles Garrett is also part of that D-line, which, you know, makes things more difficult for a call across the line when you're facing against guys that, you know, Andrew Billings as well was on there. Malik McDowell, Malik Jackson was as well along the whole thing. Um, but, you know, it's, it's a good D-line. And, mm-hmm. My biggest issue with Lucas Nyang in this game was a little bit of that fitness kind of aspect of that he was getting worked against a quick, great athletic pass rusher, even though he had zero sacks all of last season. Jadavion Clowney still is a great athlete, and I think that was a big issue to think about. As the season rolls along, we cannot have games like that be consistent. Like at some point, if Lucas Nyang is still having problems, then at that point, I think you have to go revert back to Mike Remmers at right tackle once again if this continues. Because I think mean, this was a great first test because, you know, he's not going to see too many guys that are quite as talented as Clowney as the year rolls on. Um, he, you know, he's probably going to run into uh, Justin Houston here coming up coming against up, the Ravens. Yeah, that's going to be a good test. Houston's a, you know, veteran. He had and a sack I, last week against the Right, Justin Houston Raiders. still at his age, even, even with bad knees, the guy's still productive because he's just a veteran. He knows how to play, and he's strong as hell. So that's going to be a battle to watch for sure. So it's something to, to be, you know, watching throughout the season, but it's it's not something I'm so concerned about right now to where I'm shouting and pounding the table to be putting in rimmers because I think I want to see Lucas Nyang mature as the year goes on and get playing time and just get better through experience. Yeah, I, okay, I can see that. What are, what's your thoughts, Jason? Yeah, just I on the old line you, in I mean, general. Like, yeah, how, Lucas, how Nyang, you... Lucas Nyang is essentially a rookie, and so, yeah. like, you know, you need to treat him like a rookie. We have we don't have high expectations of him, but at some point when we approach the playoffs, we're going to expect a little bit more from him. And so we'll just see how the season plays out. Yeah, guys. I mean, here's the thing, though. We got our game against the Ravens coming up, Sunday Night Football. And, uh, you know, this, this game going into the season, we thought was going to be difficult. We, we, we looked at the schedule. It's going at Baltimore. And we're thinking to ourselves, okay, we already know they have a great defense. Patrick Queen's awesome. You know, they had Marcus Peters. You know, they got Marlon Humphrey. They got all these playmakers everywhere. And, uh, you know, offensively, we consider them to be 1A, 1B with the Browns as far as running the ball, right? Well, now that whole story has changed. Now the defense is decimated with injuries. Uh, We saw, you know, obviously Marcus Peters is out for the season. Um, And I I think they got other issues going on right now defensively. Is that right, Tanner? Derek Wolfe. As well, might not play once again, but mainly it's the offense. Again, yeah. Mainly, I mean, mainly it's the offensive situation where they've they've gone through. They went their, their top three running backs all went out for the season, which is quickly. crazy. You know, Justice How Hill, even one of the guys I even have liked. All before the season starts, which is nuts. I mean, you don't see that very often happen. And I'm a I'm a J.K. Dobbins fan. Actually, I wanted to draft him in fantasy. He was a guy I thought was going to put up numbers. Yeah, you and I were both going to draft him, so. and then he went down, and then I actually did draft Gus Edwards, <laughs> right. and then I got both. <laughs> and you, you got screwed, too. <laughs> so Lamar can't do it all on his own, and he's going to try to. And we saw him fumble twice against the Raiders, and that's something he does not normally do. I think he's pressing because he knows, first of all, your receivers are, besides Sammy Watkins, 
and Hollywood Brown. Hollywood Brown, who's injured currently, or at least sat out practice today. He sat out practice today. Yeah. And you don't have a lot to work with there offensively anymore, and that's going to be a big issue. And the Chiefs need this kind of a test. The Chiefs need a test where, you know, it sucks to say, like, we don't want a team at their best 100%, but at the same time, coming off that Browns game, our defense will be happy to get themselves back corralled under control again, going against a lesser offense. And they can finally get their, maybe in their groove with Tyron Matthew and Frank Clark being back with the defense again. And so I think we're going to see this team honestly go out and just corral Lamar Jackson. It's going to be a mess for the Ravens, in my opinion. I know they're at home, but I see the Chiefs defense coming alive again and really holding them down. So um, for me, though, the, the, from the return of Frank Clark, and the return of Tyron Matthews is going to be huge for just the energy of the team and, oh, yeah. uh, you know, the depth as well. So one thing about this week, by the, by the way, guys, Andy Reid quoted uh, talking about Sammy Watkins. He goes, I'm a big fan of Sammy Watkins. I wish him the best and kind of, you know, attributed him as far as like as a, as a person and as a player that he thinks Sammy Watkins is an awesome guy, which I think we all like Sammy Watkins. Correct. Yeah. We just wish he could have been on the field a little bit more with his Chiefs tenure anyway. And then one more fun fact before I throw it over to you, Tanner. Uh, Andy Reid, coming off of this game here, if the Chiefs do get a victory, will be the only coach ever to have 100 wins with two franchises. Wow. So that's, <laughs> that's something unbelievable. To yeah. <laughs> Legendary. Goat. Goat status. All right, guys. Let's hop into the injury report right here real quick here. After today's practice, uh, Austin Blythe is questionable to play for the game against the Chiefs. Colin Sanders is questionable as well. Uh, with, a, I believe, a hamstring injury. Uh, Baltimore Ravens here have Tyree Phillips. Their starting guard is on injury reserve, so he is not going to be playing this game. Ronnie Stanley is questionable, their offensive tackle. Marlon Humphrey, Jimmy Smith are both questionable at the cornerbacks area. Same with Chris Westry and Hollywood Brown is also questionable. So, obviously, they're beat up after this Raiders game, which is concerning for a Baltimore fan, but we're not Baltimore fans. So, I mean, we're... Yes, we want the best of these guys, but we also are going to see hopefully this our offense and our defense to execute. This is going to be more of an execution game. I want to see the defense, Chris Jones, Fred Clark, see exactly what they got, Jerron Reed at the middle. I want to see Tyron Matthew and Thornhill exactly connect exactly how they should. And hopefully uh, this week we can see uh, DeAndre Baker maybe get out there too and see what he's got, maybe swap it out with Mike Hughes or something. I doubt it, but it would be nice to see. Um, I'm also – what. Up? This game here, what I'm looking forward to is our offensive line maybe getting some more confidence in there, some more chemistry, and seeing Patrick Mahomes a little bit, just a little bit more comfortable in the pocket. He lo- he has the sense to sense some of these guys come you know, behind him and stuff because it's the past years, right? But now you got Orlando Brown uh, at left tackle. You don't have Eric Fisher. Speaking of that, Tanner, are you afraid of that TikToker that you sent me the other day? Uh, his, I saw his, it again today. Oh, my God. Why do you watch those guys on TikTok, It, it just Tanner? popped up, dude. Quit watching those fools. It this, saw, this I saw it again TikTok today. Says Marlon that Humphrey. Humphrey's going to come on a, on a cornerback blitz and tear and Patrick Mahomes' uh, right ACL. Well, you can watch the sports buffoons, but other than that, you can stay off of TikTok. <laughs> but you do need to watch the sports buffoons. Tanner needs to quit sending these I'm, bad omen TikToks I'm just, about I'm just idiots showing you off there. these future supposedly guys. but I wish I could see that kid right now. I'll, t- I'll come an idiot to his face. Oh, He's yeah. been saying, no. saying some stupid shit like that to get, to get views on TikTok, you yeah. loser. It, it, was a, it was a duet kind of thing. That's why I saw it. Right. Well, I that, was like, that this guy's done. an idiot. But anyway, guys, me off. look, look. We got to see the off- We got to see this offense become something than a Tyree Kill, Travis Kelsey show. We got to see somebody else rush. We got to see Darrell look, Williams in there. Tanner, if Miko Harbin does not show up today or this, this coming weekend, I mean, I'm, I'm close to saying I'm pretty much done with the experiment offensively. Can we prinkle? Well, yeah, of course. You guys know I love Pringle. I know. I've been like, saying Pringle. Why can't we go Pringle? I've been saying, what did I why say to you guys? Why can't we get some fountain? Pringle is the WR2. Let's get fountain in the mix. Pringle should be the WR2 right? on this team. And I, and I have always agreed with you on that. But at the same time, when I look at this upcoming game, we do need to get Nicole Hardman some more looks. we we got to see what he's made of. we got to get him some confidence. Uh, maybe dr- drop a few plays for him. I, I think this could potentially be a blowout game based on the fact that Baltimore is coming off a short week and we all know that they fucking suck, right? So left guard is gone. Running backs, gone. Marcus Peters, gone. So I think this might be a scenario where the Chiefs can actually rest some starters 
in the third and fourth I quarter. A la preseason game. You guys are gonna be surprised, and I'm not gonna give you no way. I'm not giving I'm gonna give I'm not gonna give you my prediction right now. But I'm just saying, like um, I, I will this, I will say one thing for you, even though they went to overtime, the Raiders and, and Ravens did. The Ravens now have allowed the most yardage for week one. They right? suck. Based off that Raiders game, it was 400, 491 yards allowed in that one game. Uh, now, I know it went to overtime, so it's not fair to compare. But, you know, the, the defense is going to have problems in the pass game without a doubt. Yeah. I and mean, that, that's going to be a thing. Like, Mahomes could throw for 400 yards, and I would not be surprised. Yeah, and when I, when I, when I look at the Chiefs' defense, I'm just like, you know, Juan Thornhill made a great fucking pass deflection near the end of the game. Let's, let's see if he can take a step forward. I want to see more from Nick Bolton. Offensively, let's find some more rhythm. I want to get Clyde Edwards Alaire more involved in the uh-huh. passing game. Yep. Okay, more involved in the passing game. And this this is the game, guys. I, I think this is it's got blowout potential. And so this is the game with a weak Baltimore Ravens team that you want to see what McCall Harden is made of. Do you do you guys think this game needs to be a game for stability, a game for opening up against some of our third, fourth guys on the team, such as Meikle and everybody like that, because we have a hard. We're gonna have a good test against the Chargers the following week. Yeah, this so we gotta get stuff figured out. This game needs to be a route. Like yeah. this needs Correct. to be like an NFL team versus a Canadian. Football and I want to see team. the running game come alive better this yes. this week because I the agree. Browns, as we know, their front four is solid. Ravens is fine, but with the injuries, that's not the case any longer. I know. I want to see Clyde put up at least eighty yards. I want to see Daryl Williams. I want to see Daryl Williams in there. I see see Jerk, I want to see some Jerk McKinnon a little bit. You know, I want to see those kind of things work out, and I want to see other guys touch the ball, especially in the run yeah. game. And I'm not. I'm not going to hate on this Ravens defense either. Right? They got talent, guys. They, they, their their line right there alone, D line, right now has some studs in there. They do, but I, I want to wear them out. I want to see us. You do wear them to out. Them. That's what Denver did. Or I, I want to see Las Vegas. I want to wear them out the same way that Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt wore us out in the first half of the last game. That's what I want to do to these guys. Yeah, I agree. And I think they're going to wear them out more in the passing game than run game. Just still over facing Calais Campbell. So that's something to think about. Right. One of the best defensive tackles, honestly, in the history of the game. Yeah. The guy's been playing long enough, and he's been productive every year of his career. It's been amazing watching him. And, uh, but I don't know if Derek Wolf's going to play or not. So that's going to make a big impact on how I things mean, he, fall. I mean, he wasn't on the injury report for the game status, so maybe there's a chance. But he still didn't practice today because of his back. So, I mean, it's it's going to be kind of probably one of those game time decisions again come time for prime time. Yeah, and the biggest thing, guys, they can attack downfield. Like, this could be a game where maybe Hardman does get deep at some point because they're still working with their two starting safeties, Chuck Clark and Deshaun Elliott. Those are the two starting safeties. Still a lot to prove there, so um, that can be an issue without a doubt as the, the game rolls on, I yeah. think. So. And I, I apologize, guys, but before I forget, I, I forgot. Is this on our list for later? Are we going to be talking about this game a little later? Maybe. Uh, what, Ravens game? Yeah. Uh, I mean, we're going to give predictions. We're going to give pick a little bit later. Okay, okay. It could, be, it could potentially be my easy money pick of the week. I can't wait to gambling. hear this. There's, I can't wait to hear this. Okay, they're going to be on our pick here later on in the show. Um, so stick but, around. You know, other than the Chiefs, you guys, obviously we've finished up week one and rolling into week two. Overall, though, what's the consensus? What's the, what is the thought right now about what we, what we saw week one? What impressed us, what we didn't, you know, really like? And maybe what changed our perception of a certain team? Um, I know, you know, obviously the Texans getting a route over the Jaguars was a little surprising just because, you know, the Texans are just not a good team, but yet the Jaguars right. are apparently t- – t- Worse. Tyrod Taylor is going to be the key for that offense. He's going to be the key for the Texans to win any games, obviously. I guess my big takeaway, you guys, you guys can go ahead and chime in, but I think Aaron Rodgers, I don't know if he was mentally prepared for this season. He He had his third worst game of all time when you look at uh, having multiple interceptions and also like 130 yards passing for the whole game, and they they only had three points. No, no. Back on the Packers here, and I actually talked about that on my solo uh, the other day. Uh, guys, Packers had 31 players that are on their team right now did not play any offseason ball. They have two rookie guys on the offensive line. 31 guys on your team that are in the t- – your, your 53 man did not play any offseason ball. So that you're saying stupid. that was basically a preseason game for That Aaron was practically Rogers a warm-up for everybody. 
Right. Wow. And James Winston tossed five James touchdowns Winston, on your ass. James Winston was like, oh, you guys seen the play? Oh, well, let me show you how to do it. So, Tanya, you're telling me preseason does matter. It does matter. Absolutely. Look at Andy Reid. I know. Why do you think the Chiefs are the so way, good? The way Andy does it is the way I've why, always imagined why, it should be why done. Why do you think the Chiefs came back in the second half of this game and they had a different mindset? They knew exactly what they needed to do. They they had, they had knew what they wanted to do, and they did it. They executed it. They made Baker Mayfield uh, choke again, right? They made Cleveland choke again because Andy Reid – plays them in the uh, in the preseason. You have I think to. Some teams overthought the three game preseason schedule, and I think it's totally silly. I I, I like I like watch teams around the league. Detroit. And I would see Detroit. They wouldn't lost. play any anybody. Right. Like they wouldn't. All the starters would be sitting and like or like the Chiefs had played that week, and we played Patrick Mahomes, the best player in the entire league. Correct. In all the offense for a quarter or two. I mean, like, what, what are you gonna do? What? What are you gonna do understand. when you have thirty one guys now play preseason ball on your fifty three man? What do you right. think you're going to go out and dominate because you have Aaron Rodgers? You get a patch of a home sitting there. If you don't play 31 guys on your team in the preseason, you're going to get crushed either way. It don't matter if it's the Jets or uh, the Saints with Jameis Winston. Yeah, you got to see new new uniforms, new faces at least a couple times before you go out in a real game. Go play the Jayhawks. Right, absolutely. First, no, no. All right? People kind of arguing about college football. Like, well, they, they don't really do a preseason. They just start, you know, game one right away. Also, college teams play against like Division you, two schools right out the gate. So you, you're also you know, not having to do free agents. You're not signing these players. You're yeah. recruiting these guys. The, and obviously, you know what schools playing, are going to get the right, top. The down. playing field's not the same, <laughs> and it's just a whole different. It's a, it's a different world. So. Okay. It's not but, terrible guys no, out there I, shouting. I, I'm sorry, shit. I know you had more, but I wanted to let you know about the Packers. That was no, that's, what I looked up. That's anyway. my thing. You guys tell me what was your thoughts on the NFL. Well, let's talk about the Packers for a second because that's like the big news today is the fact that Aaron Rodgers shit the bed. And the thing you have to remember is that the Saints' defense is going to be a little bit better this year than they were last year. They don't have a bad rush. And Yeah, I mean, for me, the Packers, I mean, Aaron Rodgers said at some point that he was 50-50 to retire before the season started. And so maybe his mind wasn't That's what my point was originally. I don't think he's mentally prepared for this. He's not mentally prepared, but at the same point, if you were on the fence about retiring, I mean, let's say he retires after this year. Do you think he wants to go out like a scrub? Fuck no. He's going to bring his A game at oh, some point. I'm not worried probably going to the next fucking game. He's going to explode. I, I got the guy on my fantasy team on my ESPN. Yeah. And right. guess what? He's starting at week two. Yeah, I don't right. care. So long I got term, Stafford on the bench. Long term, we're not that. concerned, right? No. No, hell no. But week one, I mean, he's, he was not prepared. Week one was bad. It was I negative mean, one points. Aaron Rodgers, he could still win the MVP <laughs> award this year. I mean, it's, it's not going to happen. I promise game. you that. Yeah, like, well, I got two guys in mind. Actually, I got three. Someone who's never had a vote. Russell Wilson, Russell Wilson, and I got Kyler Murray and Patrick Mahomes are my top three. I can guarantee you this. It, it will be Aaron Rodgers or Russell Wilson winning the MVP this year. You can uh, take that shit to the bank if you guys want to bet on it. You, know, you don't want to talk about Kyler Murray? 50% of your who money. Who just tossed up. How, he got five touchdowns. I'm totally. actually glad you brought him Andy up. Rush He's not going to win the MVP five this total. year. Oh, five total, yeah. But that is one of my biggest takeaways mm-hmm. from week one in the NFL is the fact that Kyler Murray, I mean, if you guys are out there playing fantasy – He's not a guy that you want to sell high on after week one uh, because he actually had a perfect passer rating against the Blitz. If you guys want to know what a perfect passer rating is, it's 158.3. That's what he did against the Blitz. And so this year, Kyler Murray is going to explode. So I don't want you guys to think that that week one performance was an anomaly with his five touchdowns. So DeAndre Hopkins, Christian Kirk, these guys are going to have amazing years this year. Chase Edmonds had 12 rushes, 63 yards, and four receptions for 43 yards. This is an offense, whether you're in fantasy or whether you just enjoy watching NFL games, this offense is going to explode. And my other big takeaway uh, from week one would be Justin Herbert of the L.A. Chargers. So he actually had a 127 passer rating on third downs. And that's a big deal to me because if you have a really good passer rating on third downs when you have to throw the ball and the defense already knows you're going to throw the ball, that's, that's a great sign moving forward for Justin Herbert this year. I mean, he won the rookie of the year last year, but I, I expect 
Justin Herbert to take a big step forward this year. I mean, he's going to be a superstar. We already know that. But he had 337 yards, one touchdown, one interception. He lost a fumble. But that was against the Washington football team, which has an elite defense. So uh, Herbert played a great game. And so those were the, my two biggest uh, takeaways from week one in the NFL. Can, can we go back to the Arizona-Tennessee game, guys? James Conner had 16 carries. Edmonds had 12. 12 carries. But he had 12 carries for 63 yards. Connor was 16 carries for 53 yards. Right? That For the fact that they ran the ball that much on top of five carries for Murray in the touchdown for Murray, like – they're looking at a running game, essentially, right? That, that's that's what blows my mind, though, is everybody's like all Edmonds. Guys, Connor's going to take the starting job before the end of the year. We said it yeah. on the offseason. We said it in the fantasy. You and I both noticed that. And and, somehow Connor was underneath you, Edmonds in fantasy rankings. And also, Didn't make sense to me. So, so the red zone, too, right? When, when the Cardinals were in the red zone, I got to watch NFL yeah, red Connor's zone, so dude. I saw him a lot. Connor, Connor was in the, that offensive scheme every single time. I saw zero Edmonds. The entire time. Mm-hmm. It was Connor every time they were within the 10-yard line to the end zone. It's just surprised no one. It's the air raid offense. So if you're playing these guys in fantasy, I mean, all these guys are going to explode. It doesn't matter which player you have. I mean, they're going to score a lot of points this year in Arizona. And so I want to own a piece of that offense all the yeah. way around. Christian Kirk. Two touchdowns. Yeah, he'll fucking I mean, explode. This I, had that, I had that guy in DraftKings, and I was happy with the production, they, of course. And they were long throws is the thing. Right. They, were, they weren't they were just 10-yard throws. And, no, look, these, were, here, these were bombs. And here's the thing. If something is, with A.J. Green doesn't work out, Rondale Moore, an early-round draft Dude, pick. Dude, they don't fucking need A.J. Green. I, I, I know. That's what Fuck I mean. Him. They can buy him a but, coffin. But they just drafted know, a rookie whatever. named Rondale Moore who's going to get a piece of that offense yeah, as well. Exactly. So. Can, can we also discuss really quickly, too, the disappointment of the Titans, period. We didn't. Uh, we we all of us did not expect this kind of blowout week one with the Titans. So obviously they got man. Julio Jones, but Julio Jones struggled. He only had like one point, or I think two points on our league. Derrick Henry did not perform very well. Facing facing the Cardinals though, I I guess I'm it not surprised because you know I'm a Cardinals dude. That I love the Cardinals look, with, with their whole offense. The Titans nothing. O-line, that game that game means nothing. That Titans now, O-line got decimated. And I've always yeah. had a problem before the season started with the Titans defense, but. Yeah, again, dude, you're you're playing the Arizona Cardinals, so I don't take anything away from that game except for the Cardinals are a better team, but you know the Titans are still going to be a force to be reckoned with. All right, guys. So here's my biggest takeaway. I don't know why this didn't get brought up again. This is the team that's supposed to threaten us in the AFC, the Steelers Bills game, the Steelers Bills game, guys. The Bills were up ten nothing going into halftime. And they ended up being up 13-3, and they ended up losing 23-16 because they they just got decimated on the offensive side. They could not get the ball to who they needed to. Josh Allen struggled the entire time. And Ben, ben Roethlisberger does what Ben Roethlisberger does. He gets the guys where he needs to be for the playmakers, Juju, Claypool, uh, even Deontay Johnson got some passes. Like the Here's the big thing on this. I are. It's just, I mean, it's just like a fluke game for the Bills, or are the Bills going to be like one of those? No, no okay, it's, it's, it's not right. a fluke game, dude. No. Those two teams are even, is. right? So the Steelers, even though Big Ben is declining, they still have a good defense. They still have a lot of weapons. Josh Allen, you know, their defense is mediocre, and he's got, you know, Stephon Diggs, and he's got a couple of weapons on his side, but... That that's not an upset, dude. Those two teams are even in my eyes. And you know, if they play each other again in the playoffs, the Bills, you know, if they're playing at home, they'll probably win that fucking game. Yeah. But that, that it's not an upset. And I heard a lot of people talking about this earlier in the day. Uh, that is not the definition of an upset. Those two teams are fucking even. And yeah, that's great. Good for you, Steelers. But it, it wasn't a big surprise to me that the Steelers won that fucking game. No. Yeah, I thought the same way, you guys. I picked the Steelers when we did our pick mm-hmm. that last week. And the reason being is that still you got a you got a veteran type of leadership over there with Pittsburgh. Mike, and Tom- Mike they, Tomlin has and, yet to have a losing season. Right. So I just it's one of those things it's not even about that, Tanner. It's more about just the fact that the Steelers are not as bad as we think they are. They started off eleven and zero last year, which we all know was the flukiest eleven and zero of all time. At the same time, Juju had a down year 
and they got Chase Claypool coming into year two. They got Deontay Johnson, obviously, who was healthy for part of the game. And it's like this team still had talent, and they just drafted Najee Harris. Now, their offensive line sucks, and but their defense has talent everywhere. Like, this team beats the Bills because they are at least equal, if not slightly better, than the Bills are. And the Bills have zero running game at all. Devin Singletary is trash. Zach Moss didn't play, I don't think. Nope, he didn't and, play. you know, receiving-wise, you know, Josh he, Allen has it weapons. He's you got, had nine rushes from Josh Allen by right, himself. But he, that's not what the way – this isn't no, Lamar no, Jackson. No, it's I mean, not he's Lamar. fast. He's good, but – He's not Lamar Jackson. You can't do it's not that. the same thing. You can't do this consistently. Like, you know, he was he was still throwing. He got Cole Beasley quite a few times. Yeah. And obviously, uh, you know, getting digs, of course. But you can't win games doing that all the time. You cannot be one dimensional in the NFL and be successful. And I just I promise you, it won't work. It will and, not work. And here's the thing when you talk about the Steelers and the Bills, and I'm gonna throw the Browns in there right now, because when I when I talk about those three teams, if you throw those teams into a playoff series, just those three teams. You could pull names out of a hat and decide who wins that fucking series out of those three teams. You know, it's the Bills, Browns, Steelers. All three of those teams, to me, are even. All right, guys, let's dig into pick'ems real quick. Now that we're going over the NFL topics, I got a few games for you guys. Let's kick it off with the Saints at the Panthers. What are our thoughts on this game? I'm going to let Tanner go first, and I will go last on this one. Go ahead, Tanner. Look here, it's going to be a battle uh, this week here between these two teams on – Whose career is going to be revived on this one? Sam Darnold had a great game against his former team, the Jets. He connected with Robbie Anderson, who was a former Jet. He notes his, he notes his spots to go after this one. Um, my concerns with the Saints, though, they had six coaches uh, with COVID after the game, and currently they are separated into a hotel preparing for this game, which is a concern. But I think you're going to see a, shoot, a shootout in this game. I think you're going to see Sam Darnold possibly with about three or four TDs. You'll probably see Jameis Winston right around there. It's going to come down to the defense. Who can make the stop? And I, I honestly think the Saints have the better defense at the moment to be able to contain this uh, Carolina uh, offense. So if we're going to, we're going to go and do our pickums, right? Like just yep. saying, pick yeah, do it right now. I'm, I'm going Saints win by three points, last minute field goal. I'm glad you went with the Saints there, Tanner, because this is the JG. Easy money, bet of the week. The Saints are minus three at Carolina. New Orleans defense has improved, and we all know that they're going to force a couple of Sam Darnold turnovers. Saints are actually eight and three against the spread as a road favorite since 2019. So I'm going to go with the Saints here. Easy money, bet of the week, take it to the bank. Yeah, I like the Saints as well. I like the additions of Quan Alexander and Demario Davis on the defense. Obviously, Malcolm Jenkins still is a part of this team now. Um, and so. that's a three-and-a-half-point favorite for New Orleans. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. right. Take no, it. I, I like it Take all the, the way. I am all about New Orleans for this game myself. And I do think it's close, actually. Yeah, I, I really personally. do think it'll be close. Um, I'm going to go, personally, I'm going to go Saints by six. After that, guys, we got the Raiders heading over to Pittsburgh to see the Steelers. Great game right here. I think it's going to be phenomenal. Tanner, kick it off. Yeah, guys, so you had uh, another – Two teams coming off thrilling wins, right? Pittsburgh with a great comeback in the second half. And, of course, that Las Vegas Monday night game uh, was just with that touchdown to Zay Jones after assuming they won it with Edwards' pass. So uh, Josh Jacobs was very heavily in the offense uh, this last game as well. He had two, uh, two touchdowns, 34 yards, but he had 10 carries. You also have Kenyon Drake, and we saw Kenyon Drake get a lot of the passing reps as well in this game. Um, outside of that, Najee Harris was 16 uh, carries last last week with 45 yards. Uh, but I like I like seeing this wide receiver squad for Pittsburgh kind of blow up on this uh, secondary for the Raiders. I think Juju Claypool for sure will get about I'd say five to six receptions and get some major yards in this game. Um, I like the Pittsburgh Steelers to win this game by six. All right, I'm gonna have to go against you on this one. The Steelers are favored minus six and a half. Uh, it's actually updated on- to five and a half now. Five and a half. Let's be honest, guys. I thought the Raiders played like shit, especially in the first half of that game. The Steelers beat Buffalo, but I think the Steelers are going to get a little bit cocky after winning that last game, and I think the Raiders have a lot to prove because I think they look like shit against Baltimore. Uh, you look at Derek Carr. Uh, Derek Darren Waller had 19 targets yeah. in that game. And their chemistry looked like shit. 
when I was watching that game. I think that chemistry I mean, is going to little. He had ten receptions, hundred five yards, and a touchdown. I think the chemistry is going to get a little bit better, and I am going to pick the Raiders to cover. I don't know if they're going to win the game, but they are going to cover that six and a half. So who's your pick then, Jason? To win the game. To win the win game. The game. Yeah. Uh, I'm taking Steelers. All right, all right. But but they're the Steel. I I, I got to go Raiders to cover. I mean it's and minus and six and, and a half. Just note too that the Raiders it's did gonna be lose a close their, fucking game. So the Raiders did lose Gerald McCoy, defensive tackle, and Denzel Good, their guard, yeah. uh, for on IR right now. Yeah, I think this is going to be a really good game. By the way, just to watch in general. Um, I think that the Raiders. I love as you guys have always known. Josh Jacobs, one of my favorite running backs in the mm-hmm. league. Um, I like a big like you know David or Derek Carr. He's a guy that's like. It's irritatingly inconsistent because it's like you feel like he could be so much better, but he's also just an idiot at times on the yeah. field, and he plays like a little pussy. And so, <laughs> you know, the Raiders have talent on offense. Henry Ruggs is a, is a speed demon. Ruggs. And, you know, obviously we saw some playmakers there, uh, Brian Edwards there towards the end of right? the game. That yeah. came alive. I mean, oh, my gosh. that, that He was just He had a few the, great the, catches the, in that game, absolutely. too. Absolutely. I mean, he was a huge part of that victory for the Raiders. But I think the Steelers overall are just a better, well-rounded team, and I think that they can play better defense than the Raiders can provide. And I also think that the Ben Roethlisberger is going to be a produ- better producer at quarterback than what Derek Carr is going to do on the Raiders' side. Mm-hmm. And I think it's going to be a close game. I'm going to stick the Steelers, though, by, you know, probably somewhere Steelers by three. Okay, so, like so you would definitely take the Raiders on the on the points? Uh, yeah, okay. in that case, you're right. right. After that, guys, we got the Cowboys going over to the L.A. Chargers. Who do we got there, Tanner? Cowboys to the L.A. Chargers. Oh, man. Sorry, I'm pulling that up here real quick. So you have the Cowboys who had a great game against the Bucks, right? So we saw Dak Prescott do Dak Prescott things. He threw the ball. How many times was that? It was like 56 or something in that matter. It was he a lot of a threw lot the throws. ball ridiculously. 59 maybe. You had 11 carries for Elliott alone. I think this game you're going to see Elliott explode on this Chargers defense. Yeah, it'll be better. He, you get Zach Martin back, a right guard. You moved your guy that was at uh, right guard to right tackle because that right tackle went out. So you got those two, that side, pretty convenient. So now you got Elliott, who should be able to run on this Chargers defense. Their linebackers aren't that great on the Chargers. No. So you get past that line, you're, you should be seeing a lot better. I think Elliott ends up with about 15 to 20 carries this game. Um, Cooper, obviously Cooper and Lamb, they saw lots of targets, lots of receptions this last game. That should go down. Dak Prescott was 42 for 58. Hopefully he can reduce that by about 10 throws, maybe 15, and still win the game. Uh, Herbert, of course, I think it's another great test for Herbert to see where he's going to go. It's going to be a, it's going to be one, another shootout for Dak Prescott, another shootout for Justin Herbert. Um, I do think Dallas ends up taking this game by two touchdowns, uh, so 14 points on my side. And wow. uh, I look at Elliott to have a huge monstrous game this game. By two touchdowns two on touchdowns. the road. I totally disagree with you, Tanner. You know, the Cowboys are favored. I think they're minus two and a half. Minus three and a half now. Minus three and oh, a half no. on the road. No, the Chargers are favored now three and a half. What the fuck had just happened? <laughs> I just looked it up like two hours ago. Yeah. The Cowboys were favored. Chargers. Three At any half. rate, I totally disagree with you, Tanner. Uh, they're playing on the road. Cowboys played like it was their Super Bowl, and they still lost that game against the Bucks. I think they're going to be mentally drained. Uh, when I look at Justin Herbert, I, I think he played good, but he didn't play great. And so in this next his, game, his I do. His receivers also dropped like eight passes. He played good, but not great. I expect him to be great in this game, and I do take the Chargers in this game. All right. All right, guys, I'm, I'm a tanner on the Zeke the Elliott thing because you guys know how I feel about Zeke being in better shape this year. He just faced the best run defense in the entire league last Vita week. Vita guys, we expected Vita nothing. Vita. We expected Vita nothing Vita. out of that. We're not going <laughs> to worry about that. That is the best run defense that's going on three, four years straight running here. All right, guys, besides that, Chargers are not that. So um, that's going to be a thing where we're going to see a lot of quality throws from Dak Prescott in this game, and Zeke's going to probably put up at least 100 yards rushing. Um, and I think the Chargers, you know, they're going to storm back as well. I think we're going to see still, because that Cowboys pass defense sucks, I think we're going to see Herbert have a good game. Uh, I think that we're going to see probably plenty of action from Austin Eckler. Yeah. Um, so I just think it's going to be a good, well-fought game between both teams. I think that it's going to be kind of a shootout. Uh, but I'm going to go Cowboys here because and, I trust mm-hmm. that they're going to come out and prevail and win by three points. So keep in mind, too, something that came out recently, guys. We got Gallup into reserve. Sure. You have Randy Gregory out this game. 
you also have Demarcus Lawrence out and possibly yep. going on the IR as well mm-hmm. later on. So you're looking at three big guys for that team on, on top of uh, Leo Collins, offensive tackle being out as well for the Dallas Cowboys. Yep, Cowboys cannot start 0-2. That's just going to be an issue. Yeah, I, I disagree so, with that. I well, think they I know. can you, you start 0-2. Can because the division's so bad. Yeah, but I, I mean, just, uh, they, they can easily make the playoffs. I mean, we've seen teams in this league go 0-3, 0-4, and yeah. still make the playoffs. It's not that big of a deal. I just, I just personally don't think that this is the week. Like, I mean, I believe in the Chargers they, this week. They did just take the best team in the NFL, considering last season, to the wire in the Buccaneers, right? Let's keep yeah, that in mind. they did. Took so, him to the wire. And they can take, a, they so, can take okay. the and beat three field goals. So, so you're seeing it as a confidence builder, and I look at it the, in the opposite way, where it's just like they're they're fucking drained after expending all that. Cowboys, energy. like I said be, to begin with, they're a ten and seven team. They are a quality team. They just l- lack some things in the past defense perspective. Yeah. Offensively, though, top five offense in the league. Let's see how it goes. I- I'm interested in that because you guys both took the took the Cowboys. I took the Chargers. So. Let's see what the fuck happens. Maybe we can put five dollars on that game. All right, guys, we got two more games to go by here. Uh, Titans at Seahawks. Now, what do you got, Tanner? So, Titans Seahawks, guys. Uh, obviously, Tennessee did not start the way they wanted to with uh, versus Arizona with Chandler Jones getting five sacks on them, uh, which was crazy. Uh, I think this week you're going to see uh, potential another beat down on the Titans, guys. Russell Wilson, the Seattle Seahawks, had a great game this last game. They opened up strong. They opened up fast. Uh, I th- I really think that you're going to see Seattle take down this Tennessee team pretty quickly like Arizona did. Uh, I see Tannehill's line struggling. I see Derrick Henry. He had 17 carries, only 56 yards. Well, you're going to be probably about the same this week. You're not going to look that great. Uh, and then I think Russell Wilson to uh, lock it. I think you're going to see, well, he had four receptions, 100 yards. You could be seeing six to, six to seven receptions this week, about a 150 maybe, and a couple TDs here. Um, as far as the injury reserve go, real quick, guys, uh, looking down the way, nobody really out big. Uh, Ethan uh, po- Pochick, uh, the center for the uh, Seattle, is out, and Rashad Penny Rashard Penny is out for the running back as well. He is doubtful, so he's most likely out with an injury. So I'm going to go uh, Seattle wins about three touchdowns deep on these guys. Yeah, so Seattle is minus 5.5 in this game, and uh, I'm going to go with Seattle to cover here. Uh, Tennessee just, uh, when I watched that first game, their defense is a little bit shaky. And, I mean, I believe in the Titans' offense, but they're going to get torched by Russell Wilson in this game, uh, especially playing in Seattle. So I'm going to take Seattle. I'm going to take the points here, too. Yeah, I mean, they just gave up five touchdowns of Kyler Murray, like I said. Here's a guy one inch taller. So Russell Wilson's going to do exactly what Kyler Murray did and has just as good as weapons when you look at it. DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, both those guys are Blow special up. players. Blow up. I don't know what this this whole over-under thing is with the Titans-Seahawks game. It makes no sense to me. Titans are favored right now. Is that right, Jason? No, Seattle. I, Seattle they, now favorite. Seattle's okay. five and a half. Yeah, favorite. I think it was like Seattle's a typo five and a half. Okay. All right. Yep. All right. There was a typo that we saw. All right. Yeah. Seahawks definitely win this game without a doubt. So no question in my mind. Uh, after that, guys, we had our big game. Chiefs. Ravens. Chiefs are now favored by. Is it three and a half? Right. It is. I just clicked on it. Three and a half. Chiefs. All right. Tanner, what do you got? So three and a half. Chiefs favorite. I'd take this game big time because I think they're going to definitely dominate this game. Uh, Lamar Jackson. You're going to see this guy put. The team on his back the entire season. Obviously, you saw him do it on Monday night, and it did cost him a couple of fumbles, especially one crucial one after a turnover from the Raiders in OT. Uh, I Guys, look, it's going to be plain and simple here. If the Chiefs just come out and play their game and don't mess around this time, it's going to be a simple win, easy win. Very, very few struggles across the way. I do like the Baltimore defensive line giving the, our offensive line fits again, but I'm okay with that. I want that offensive line to get fits early, so I'm cool with that. Uh, as far as injury report, guys, we kind of went over it a little bit. Um, nobody big time out right now uh, across the board that's already out, which is kind of nice to see for that, so I'm going to go Chiefs. You know what? They're probably going to win by three touchdowns this game. Yeah, I mean, this is a game, like I said earlier, this has blowout potential, so the Chiefs are only favored by three and a half the last time I checked. Yep. And, you know, you got that starting left guard that was carted off the field last week. He's on injured reserve for the Ravens. Yep. And, uh, 
Dude, they look like shit against the it Raiders. I mean, to me, the Raiders, that was just a shitty all-around game. I thought both teams looked like shit. So, you know, the Chiefs should easily be, to, be able to cover that three and a half. So I will take the Chiefs, and I will take them to cover. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. I think the Chiefs are going to have a really solid game here. Um, I think that, you know, the Ravens have now lost four in a row to Kansas City, and it's going to go on to five now. Uh, the Chiefs will win this game by 10 points. I'm going with a, you know, occasional score in my head here of Chiefs 27, and I got Ravens coming in at 17. So that is my prediction for yeah. Chiefs Ravens. Sounds right. All right, guys. Uh, so I know uh, Jason's been very hungry, uh, actually, this evening. So I don't know what was going on right with the stomach and all that. But, um, guys, we were, we were talking about this a little bit ago. Like, if you had a situation to come about to where if you could only eat one fast food for the rest of your life, one fast food place, you can go anywhere else. You have to you have to pick Taco Bell, McDonald's, uh, Chubba Chubba, whatever. Um, Chubba Hubbard. Chubba Hubbard. Chubba <laughs> Chubba. Uh, you could even pick uh, what's what's the what's that one actor? His his Nick his, Chubb. Chubb? Is there is there a Chubbies? I think it's, I think it's a place Chewies? called Chubbies. Chewies. Chewies. Chewies and Chubbies. I don't There's know. There's all kinds of different restaurants out never there, guys. Never been to Chewies, so. Still, you never been to Chewies? I haven't been to Chewies yet. What the hell, Tanner? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tanner. Well, anyways, my question was, if you could pick one only the rest of your life, which fast food restaurant would you live off of and be happy? Ooh, that's a tough one. Only one fucking restaurant for the rest of my life. Well, that's kind of an easy decision for me because, uh, you know, I'm kind of a West Coast guy, even though we run this show from the mid- Midwest. Uh, my favorite fast food restaurant of all time. Of Here it all is. Time. Here it is. In and Out fucking <laughs> Burger. We all and do I don't want to hear anything from Carrington Harrison off of 610 Sports. That guy didn't know what the hell he's talking about. He's got his head up his ass. That's the goat burger. <laughs> it is the best burger of all time. And if I had to eat that fucking cheeseburger for the rest of my life, every fucking day, three meals a day, I'm going to eat that bullshit. Along with the fresh cut French fries. And I'm going to take animal it to the style. back, dude. Animal, animal style. style. Animal style with that fucking I mean, sauce. Yeah. I think, you'd, I think you'd have a stomachache a lot. Is I, the wouldn't only problem a I, with that. I wouldn't give a fuck. Yeah, I'm going to go I'm gonna go easily for me. It'd be, uh, uh, pff, gosh, what was it? It's an in-out burger. Jack in the Box. Jack in the because Box. Because of the variety. You, you can get, like like you said, egg rolls. We can get tacos. We can get burgers. We get, the, the breakfast food is a huge fuck. menu. Dude. I got I got I can live off all that shit. There's salads there. Like I can do every fucking thing there. So give me uh, give me Jack in the Box because the variety they provide means I can live a nutritionist life forever. And that was my that that was my dude that was my second choice. Fruit? <laughs> that was that was my second Balance. choice. Maybe if yeah. we ever have if somebody holds a gun to our head, maybe they'll give us two choices. I think, and I could take right. In and Out and Jack in the Box. They have fruit that would salad be there, my number one and number two. Right. All right. What do you got, Tanner? All right, guys. So if you listen to the show in the past, you will know my choice is fairly easy. On Culver's. This. It is not Culver's. It is Taco John's. Oh, shit. That is one of my we should have had my brother places. Troy on this You're episode. You're a sick bastard. Yeah, you are no, sick. my Favorite brother Troy places. would say the exact same I, thing. Taco John's all day long. There's something bastard. about Taco John's that I've always loved. Yeah, I, I get so crazy, many dude. food there. The potato lays are amazing. They also got taco salads. Dummy, and they also got uh, breakfast food as well. So. I'm telling you, dude. The next oh. time my brother Troy comes oh, on the show, he'll tell you the exact same fucking look, thing. There's something about Taco John's that just, just mesmerizes ooh. people. It just gets me. Every time. <laughs> so I'm going Taco John's as mine, not Culver's, but Culver's is the same. I love it, dude. If I had a second, I love Culver's. Taco John's. I love it. <laughs> oh, I can't stand that voice. All right, guys. Glad we got that out of our systems at least, and maybe we can. Uh, you know, maybe we make, make that a whole experience, Tan- Tanner, one day. Have your breakfast, lunch, and dinner all at Taco John's in one day. Don't would you do that? Me. Don't tempt me. I bet you would. Would you do that for In-N-Out Burger? I would do it only if we could do, like, an all-day show and we could yeah. do our podcast while we're eating all three of those meals. What do you want to yeah. start? That would be like, a great what, day. Dude, Tan- I would love before? that. If I could just do Jack in the Box oh, all yeah, day. Dude, like, the breakfast amazing. was good. The, the, the tacos, the salads, everything. We'll, we'll, do our, we'll do our podcast Industry. at the restaurant. Yeah. Or maybe in the picnic area because Jack in the Box has picnic. 
tables outside. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's oh, true. Man. Although, if we ever go to Vegas again, all together again, we have to go to In-N-Out Burger. That'll be oh, your, yeah, your spot to go hang out at for it. sure. So, All right, guys, I got one more segment for you guys before we wrap up the show here today. So, obviously, fantasy is, is a big topic on our show here. I want to play a little game of buy low, sell high with you guys. And my first guy on my list here that I'm going to say buy low right now is Henry Ruggs coming off of a kind of a down game, of course, after that Ravens game from Monday Night Football. He was only targeted five times, maybe because there was 19 effing targets to the tight end, Darren Waller. And then he only had two catches out of those five targets. So finished off the week with six points in PPR formats. And I think he is poised to bounce back off of that and eventually become realized more as a deep threat weapon of the offense. He was a first-round pick. I mean, people considered him to be, you know, which is not true, almost as fast as Tyreek Hill. Henry Ruggs is fast, but, I mean, no one's as fast as Tyreek Hill. But this is a guy that has high upside and eventually can become a big-time vertical threat within this offense. Do not give up on Henry Ruggs at all. Now, here are you guys' buy lows, and we're going to do a sell-high segment right after that. Go ahead, Tanner. Uh, buy lows as a different player. So buy low, guys. Um Hang on here. I just had him up here. Buy low, buy low, buy low. Hold on, sorry. Uh, DeAndre Swift, guys, buy low. Everybody was hating against DeAndre Swift. Everybody hated him this offseason. You not believe me? He so, sucks. So, so, so wait, Tanner, he has 24 points, and he went on to buy low? He had 24 points, and everywhere I looked, from anywhere from TikTok to YouTube shows, they were. His, they did not want to get Tanner. His ADP Swift. was somewhere around twenty seven point nine. So, Correct. so it's like he was a late second, early third round pick in most he, formats, which is nobody wanted him. Proper, I would say. But I mean, he also is battling with p- position right now with Jamal Williams. So that's something to think about with uh, DeAndre that's Swift. True. But DeAndre Swift though is getting the majority of the targets, so he is majority of the receiving targets. So like, Jamal also had eight catches in the game. Yeah, Tanner. yeah, but DeAndre Swift with the highest. You had DeAndre Swift because the, at the receivers top, are dog shit. TJ Hawkinson and it, I talked about this on my pod, on my solo here as well on my two truths in the last segment. DeAndre Swift was one of my highlights. That you should, if, if you're able to go get him, go get him. And now if you uh, sorry by low, I guess this guy that who got less points, right? So that would be AJ Brown would be mine for this a- year. You, did you just sell high or buy low, Tanner? Buy low on AJ Brown. Buy low. So you had two buy lows. I well yeah two buy lows. But okay. buy low, a real buy low, it would be A.J. Brown. Okay. 16 points last week. Um, obviously, the Titans offense struggled. Um, he did not lead in the team for targets at all or receptions. 49 yards is all he got in this one. So I'd go, if you can get A.J. Brown for a cheap price, send, send a, a Zequel somewhere. Something like that. You're go a big A.J. Brown guy. I know, Tim. I love A.J. Brown. <laughs> and I got him. You just want to talk about A.J. Brown as well. That's all. Well, he has to. a big dick. I'll agree with him on that. What do you got, Jason? All right. This is the buy low segment. So I'm going to go with Ezekiel Elliott. You know, he had only had five fantasy points uh, in full PPR. Uh, but when I look at his upcoming schedule, you know, he just played against Tampa Bay. Yeah. And he's got at LA Chargers. And he came off a really bad year, right? Yeah. So people already have a bad perception of him. Oh, yeah. He's a terrible so, fucking The whole player. Cowboys team. And I'm, I'm going to buy low because the, the first part of his schedule is tough, but then he's got a big portion of his schedule uh, that's going to be a shitball schedule. And, you know, we already know what Zeke brings to the table. He's a big fucking bowling ball. It's going to just bulldoze everybody over. So Zeke is my first buy low. And then another guy uh, that you might not uh, think of right off the bat is Latavius Murray. And so they just signed him literally off the street, uh, the Baltimore Ravens, because they were desperate. And when I look at Latavius Murray, he's kind of like uh, Old Faithful. I mean, he only had 10 rushes for 28 yards, one touchdown in Baltimore that first game. You take it with a touchdown, those are shitty-ass fucking numbers. But we all know the Ravens are going to try to run the ball down their throat. No matter how shitty that team gets, they're going to run the ball all day long. And so I think based on volume... Latavius Murray is a guy that you would want to buy low here. Yeah, I like your Zeke pick there without a doubt because it makes sense as far as his uh, the, the perception versus what he's going to be doing throughout this season because it's guys it's, it's a marathon not a yeah. sprint here. So if, and if you saw his schedule there, yeah, it's, oh my, oh, it's going to be wonderful. Oh he's going to have a good season yeah. and he's in better shape than he's been in a long time. Chiefs are the next big one, and he's also a better team. player than DeAndre Swift. He's on a slightly better team than DeAndre Swift. No offense, yeah. Tanner. All right, guys, after that, we got to sell yeah, high here. we got to sell high on someone. 
Tan, I'm going to come with a kind of a weird one here. You guys, some people out there are going to be kind of confused. No, I got a weird one. We have Jamal Williams, actually, the running back, the DeAndre Swift's uh, counterpart there with the, with the Detroit Lions, who came out kind of out of nowhere and put up 23 points in PPR formats, or 24 points, excuse me, in PPR formats. And he had nine rushes on this, eight catches for 56 yards. So he had a lot of catches. The yardage wasn't really there. But this is a guy, if you can throw him out there because he – I guarantee you, whenever you drafted Jamal Williams in your league, you get you. What kind of round did you pick on him? It was a round ten, round eleven. Uh, I, I got I, mean, a, I got him about ten or eleven. So you're in that range already. So at this point, his value is not going to necessarily go much lower than that. It's only going to be at this point you can get better value currently for him now than you will later on in the season because I think Donda Swift does end up stealing more of the playing time as things goes on throughout the season. And you're not going to see Jamal Williams put up 24 points a game very often. So, in my opinion, this is a chance for you to potentially get a receiver if you need one on your team or a tight end on your team because you want to maybe want to convince a guy that, hey, Jamal Williams is going to be a part of the passing game because Tyler Williams or, Ty, or Tyrell Williams is uh, their only receiver worth a crap, you know. And so my guy is Jamal Williams. Tanner, what do you got? Uh, guys, I got Jalen Hurts as a sell high, right? Get get rid of him. Get rid of him. Get something good. Get him now before he really starts going downhill. The guy is not going to be consistent this year at all. He is going to be playing the t- next six nine, next six, six games. It's going to be the toughest games for him until Detroit Lions. So do not like get just get rid of Hurts. Go get something as depth on your team because you know you need it. If you're obviously if you have Jalen Hurts, get rid of get rid of Hurts. Gotcha, Tanner. All right. Well, I just got to I gotta be the tiebreaker here because we're sitting here talking about Detroit Lions running backs. This whole fucking show, I'm getting sick and tired of it. So I'm going to break <laughs> it down for you right now. So DeAndre Swift, you are not is, going he's a good running back, but he's on a shitty team. So you don't want anything to do with DeAndre Swift. Jamal Williams, on the other hand, Detroit Lions suck. They're going to be throwing the fucking ball all day long. They are not going to be throwing the ball to Tyrell fucking Williams. So I would hold on Jamal Williams. I would not sell. But as far as my sell hell sell high guys, I'm gonna go with a guy by the name of Nelson Aguilar. Mike, can you please tell me how to pronounce his name correctly before I go on? <laughs> right, the Nelson assholeer. Oh, assholeer. Yes. Yes. So I'm I'm selling high on the assholeer because he's gonna have some great games this year. I, I do believe in Mac Jones uh, and uh, the chemistry that he's gonna find with the assholeer, uh, but it's not gonna be a consistent thing. Mac Jones, he's got James White to throw to, Jonu Smith, Hunter Henry. Uh, the assholer had five receptions, 72 yards, and a touchdown. This is a really good game for the assholer, but you're not going to be able to de- depend on him. So I'm going to sell high on the assholer. Another guy I want to talk about is Amari Pooper. Uh, 13 what? receptions, 130. Yeah, you heard me. Amari Pooper. We know what to expect from this guy every he, fucking year. He led year. all receivers in points this past week. Yeah, he'll get your hopes up every fucking week. 13 receptions, 139 yards, two touchdowns. You know, I'm actually a big believer in Dak Prescott this year, uh, but I'm not a big believer in Amari Pooper. I mean, he's just going to be inconsistent. You, you know, Amari, Much the same way that Nelson Assholer is going to be inconsistent. No, you know Dak Prescott's not going to throw a 60. Yeah, obviously he's not going to be consistent making the 38 points he did this game. Now Gallup's on IR, but so Gallup's on that's IR. Remove a guy. Like Tanner, he had two fucking touchdowns. You want to sell high on Amari Cooper? That's my whole fucking point. Uh, and the next guy I'm, I'm I want to talk on about Cooper personally. You're gonna hold on to yeah. Cooper. on the Cooper. Yeah, I, okay, I, I, I and I respect that. The other guy I want to bring <laughs> up is Tyler Lockett, Seattle Seahawks. Twenty-six fantasy points and PPR, four receptions, only four, but he had a hundred yards, two touchdowns on only five targets in the game. Uh, you know, they got DK Metcalf over there. So, again, Tyler Lockett, not a guy I'm going to depend on on a weekly basis. So I'm going to sell high on Tyler Lockett as well. I can get down on that. Yeah, I can get down I'll on disagree that. on that one. Tyler Lockett's pretty consistent. I mean, you, you know what you're going to get out of Tyler Lockett every year. So I'll disagree with you on that. I think he he's definitely a hold as well, personally. Okay. But Well, we'll agree to we'll... disagree. <laughs> agree to disagree. That's a good fucking show. There we go. All right, well, that's a good fucking show, Jason. I agree. Right, <laughs> well, we, we were off air on YouTube today, so we didn't even get a chance to uh, see our faces talk about TikTok as much and all the other bullshit we bring up. So 
Uh, in this case, we're just doing full audio. So Spotify, guys, yeah. hit us up out there. Give us a follow on Twitter and all that. And, uh, oh, well, Jason, did you, did you want to talk about crypto before we get done here? I don't want to, but the producers told me that we must talk about cryptocurrencies today. Just can you just? Pick I'll, one? I'll give you. I'll give, give you one, one take. One. Give me one fucking take. Buy low. One sell high. Crypto right now. Because crypto's on the rise again right now. Uh, what, what is your What is your favorite cryptos to, to buy low? And no, sell I'll low? just. I, I don't want to do both. You don't. You need to do buy low. I just want to go. I'll tell you my sell high right now. So Solana, the last time I checked was one hundred and fifty four dollars, and so I do agree with uh, Solana as being a long term play. But I think you can get a little bit cheaper. I see when I look at the technical trading, I'm calling for between one hundred and two and one hundred and twenty dollar Solana. I like so. I like Engine Coin right now is one of my favorites mm. to pick up right now at the moment because Engine Coin is sitting at dollar seventy five right now per coin, and that thing looks to be on the way because NFTs are on the rise. So that's actually a coin based around NFTs. It's actually used in gaming. So that's something to keep track of, and I think definitely worth the value. And it's less than a billion um, for supply. So that's something to keep track of because at 175 I mean, that can end up raising up to easily $5 sometime in the next, I would say, three months if things go right. Tanner, you have one? No, I don't know. No cryptos for Tanner? I got no cryptos. Gosh darn it, Tanner. But I will tell you that Salvador Perez just hit number 44. 44. Yeah, baby. One away from bench. He's going to break the record, dude. He's going to break the Royals and the catcher record. So that's what I'm hoping for. (laughs) All right, guys. Any final thoughts? Nah, man. All right, then. In that case, thank you all for joining. And out there listening, I appreciate it very, very much. Those of you on the road listening as well, uh, leave leave us some thoughts and comments on our, either our, uh, you know, hit us up on, I guess you can't really comment on our Spotify, can you? But you can comment. No, I'll be on coming our on our YouTube. YouTube and come, Twitter. Come yell at us on Twitter. All that uh, good stuff. TikToks. Get us on the TikTok. Guys. At Sports Buffoons. All the good stuff. We'll be here all season long, of course. And hopefully more productive than we were this week because, you know, we, we, we had some technical issues. We'll get through that, and we'll do better. Don't worry, guys. Yeah, Don't give up on us here. If, if you are liking us, following us live on YouTube, uh, check us out during the week. As we get closer to the show next week, I'll let you know where we're at. All right, guys, and I will see you all on the next one. Sports buffoons, we're out. See you guys.